Chapter 4, Section 4, Adding and Subtracting Polynomials and also Graphing Simple Polynomials. Quite a bit in this section. We're going to identify terms and coefficients. We're going to add like terms. We're going to uh, know a little bit of the vocabulary regarding polynomials and the different types. We're going to also evaluate polynomials. That's when we plug numbers in and simplify. We're going to add and subtract uh, polynomials, which is uh, why we practice adding like terms. And we're also going to graph equations defined by polynomials of degree 2, or the quadratic functions. So let's, see, uh, let's start here first with consider the expression 2x to the third plus 3x to the second plus 5x plus 9. Now there are four themes that are being added. And these four themes that are being added are called terms. They're parts that are technically added or subtracted. Of course, subtraction is just like adding the opposite. So if we have a subtraction, we can think of that as plus the opposite of it. And it has to do with the idea, again, that these are things that are being added. So I have 2x to the third, that's a term. 3x to the second is a term. 5x is a term. And 9 is a term, all positive because of all the plus signs there. Now, when you have a term, typically a term is made up of two parts. It's made up of a constant, and it's also a factor, and it's also made up of a variable that may be raised to a power. So if I take the first one, 2x to the third, and I break that down, the 2 in the 2x to the third here is called the coefficient or the numerical coefficient. And of course, your variable here is x. So your coefficient is 2, the variable is x. In the next term, which was 3x squared, this is the coefficient, and this is the variable x here. Coefficient is 3, variable is x. In 5x, let me move this up just a little bit. 5 is my coefficient, x is my variable, this is like x to the first power, okay, coefficient is 5, variable is x. Remember the numerical coefficient is the constant factor. It's being multiplied, but it's a number only. And then we have 9. Now technically, technically, 9 is the same as 9x to the 0, because x to the 0 is considered to be 1, and that's just 9 times 1. So it looks like 9 is our coefficient and x is our variable. But because we don't typically recognize x to the 0 as being a, a factor there, we just think of 9 as not a, as a coefficient, but as what we call a constant term, because there's no variable there. All right, I know technically we could think of it as a variable, but we're not going to go that route there. Now, I want to name the coefficient of each term in the expression t minus 10t to the second power. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do here is I am going to rewrite t minus 10t to the second power as t plus negative 10t to the second power. As I mentioned before, subtraction is the same as adding the opposite. So by thinking of it that way, I have a term here t, and I have a term here negative 10t to the second. So we'll start with t here, and I've stuck a little 1 in front there, because 1 times t is t. t is my variable, but 1 is my coefficient. You're going to name the coefficient, so for if the coefficient isn't written down there, it's understood to be a 1. If there's a negative sign or subtraction sign in front, then we think of it as a negative 1. Now for the second term, which was negative 10t to the second power, the negative 10 is our coefficient there. Now, when looking at the coefficients of an expression, as I mentioned before, it's, it's helpful if you think of addition as like positive signs, plus signs as positive, and subtraction or minus signs as negatives. So when I look at that uh, subtracting 10t to the second power here, when I look at that, I think of that as a negative, as a negative 10t squared. I, I picture it in my head written this way, even though it's written that way. Now, if you want to take the step until you get more comfortable with it and change it to adding the opposite, then that would be fine. Now, when we have terms, sometimes we have terms that have different variables. Sometimes we have terms that have the same variable but with different exponents. So we also want to talk about those times when we have terms that have the same variable and the same exponent for the variable. And that's what we usually refer to as like terms. Like terms are terms that differ only by the coefficients. Everything else is either exactly the same or they just differ by the coefficient. Now, when we have like terms, and by the way, constant terms, that's the you know just the numbers, Constant terms are considered like terms. When we have like terms, the good news is that we can um, combine. 
or that we can add them together. So that's what we're going to be looking at here first. But first, let's just look at some examples of like terms. Examples of like terms. 2x to the fourth, negative 7x to the fourth. Okay? Those are examples of like terms because they have everything variable-wise exactly the same with the exponent. They differ only by the coefficient. And these, these are all constant terms, so they're like terms. Here we have like terms, even though there are two variables, they have the same two variables and they have the same exponents. They both be to the first power. They differ only by the coefficients. And believe it or not, these three are like terms. You can probably tell this right away, but remember that if it's just an x, it's like a 1x. So my coefficients are different, but my variables are exactly the same, all to the first power. These are like terms. Now what aren't like terms? 3x and 3y, they have different variables. They're not like terms. These are examples that are not. Or x to the fifth and x to the second, they have the same variable, but they have different exponents. Or here, 5x squared y and negative 2xy squared. Here, they, again, they have the same variables, but they have different exponents for the x's, different exponents for the y's. And it didn't matter that they were both different, even if just one of the, even if just the x's are different and the y's are exactly the same, those are not considered like terms because we want to be able to use this nice little distributive property function here to simplify by combining like terms or to add like terms. Now, I look at this problem that I have here. 3x squared minus x squared plus 2x. I have one, two, three terms, and two of them, the first one and the second one, are like terms. Now, if it helps you, take the time and write minus x squared as plus negative 1x squared plus 2x. Now I have like terms here, and because I have like terms, I'm going to use the distributive property. Remember the distributive property was a times the quantity b plus c is equal to a times b plus a times c, where you multiply it through. Well, in this case, we're going to kind of reverse it. We're going to start with this, and we're going to go backward by not multiplying through, but dividing or factoring out the common factor. See, they both have an x squared, and that's a factor. So I am going to factor out the x squared, and that would leave the 3 plus the negative 1. And 3 plus negative 1 is 2, so I have 2x squared plus 2x. And that would be simplified by combining the like terms, the first two terms being like terms. Now, I don't normally write this step in where I'm using the distributive property. I kind of just go ahead and do that part of it in my head. It saves a little bit on time, but if, you're tr if you have trouble, especially with the signs, I would suggest that you put this step in. We'll try a couple more examples here. All right, so I have 6m squared minus 3m minus 2m squared. I have three terms again, and only two of them, the first one and the last one here, are like terms because they have m squared. This one just has m. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine uh, my like terms. Now, what, uh, what some students like to do, and it's okay if you want to do this, is they want to put the terms that they're combining next to one another. So they're going to write 6m squared, then they're going to write the minus 2m squared, and then they're going to write the minus 3m, which is fine. You can do that. But we know that subtraction is the same as adding the opposite. So we could think of this, if we wanted to, as 6m squared plus negative 3m plus negative 2m squared, and you know from the associative property that you can add any two together first. And so I could just add the first one and the last one. But by putting the last one there a little bit closer, now you can see how you could factor out that m squared. 6m squared minus 2m squared is 4m squared, and then minus the 3m. Now you can combine those. This is as far as it goes. And that's your answer considered simplified. Now in this next example, there are only two terms. That's a plus sign there, kind of hard to tell. I have 6r squared plus 3r. There are no like terms here. This term's got an r squared. This term's got an r to the first. So this is already simplified. Okay. Now in this next one, I have one, two, three terms. And they all appear to be like terms this time because they all are x to the thirds. This is 5x to the third. This is a minus 7x to the third. This is like a minus 1x to the third. Now, you've got to be careful with your signs here because I've got more negatives than I have positive here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
combine these like terms by combining the coefficients. I'm going to take 5 minus 7 is negative 2, minus 1 is negative 3, and I have x to the third. Now, you are combining, you're adding these, so you don't add the exponents, you only add the exponents when you multiply the variables together, and that's not what we're doing. We're not multiplying those variables together. So when you combine like terms, your answer has that same like term. Okay, so here's my little hint. Remember, unlike terms have different variables or different exponents. Keep track of that as it happened in C. They had the same uh, variable, but they had different exponents. Okay, now kind of a neat definition here. A polynomial, a polynomial in X. Okay, a term or the sum of a finite number of terms of the form ax to the n for any real number a and any whole number n. That's kind of a fancy definition. What it's going to look like is a whole bunch of terms combined, added and subtracted, that all have the same variable, in this case the variable x, because it's a polynomial of x. Here's a great example of a polynomial of x. This polynomial is one, two, three, four terms. Now you say, well, this doesn't have an x, that's okay, it's a constant term that can make up part of it, okay? And this 5x to the fourth minus 3x to the second plus 9x, those are all terms, but they're not like terms, so you can't simplify this. This is as far as this would simplify. But this is an example of a polynomial in x with four terms. Now, if your polynomial is only one term, it only has a, a single term here, okay? If like 5x to the fourth, that was the first term, the coefficient's five, the variable's x. It has four factors of x. We say that this is degree four because it has four factors of x. We say this term has degree two because it has two factors of x. We say this term has degree one because it has one factor of x. And we say that this constant term has zero degree or degree zero because there are no x's. So the degree of a term is the sum of the exponents of the variables. Well. This only had one variable, this only had one variable, this only had one variable. So that's why it was just 4 and 2 and 1. But sometimes they have more than one variable, and we'll get to one of those examples for right now. So as I mentioned, term 2, the coefficient was negative 3, the, uh, the degree was 2 because it's x squared, the variable is x. Here the variable is x, it's degree 1, and here then constant term, the degree is 0. Okay. Now, you may or may not have noticed that in this example that the degree of this first term was 4, the degree of this second term was 2, the degree of this term was 1, and the degree of the last term, the constant term, was 0. See how the, the degrees are going down? Okay, when the degrees drop down like that, we say that they have descending powers, okay, or decreasing degree. Okay, you'll hear that expression as well. This book likes to use the expression descending powers. Now in this example, they're not in descending power order. This is 3x to the second minus 6x to the third plus 2x minus 5. This is degree 2, degree 3, degree 1, degree 0. I'd have to change these two around. And notice that the minus sign in front of the 6x to the third tags along for the ride. The positive 3x squared becomes the plus 3x squared. Everything else is the same. Once you've written it that way, then you have descending powers or descending order. Sometimes they're called that, or decreasing order. All right, so the degree of a polynomial, now we've talked about the degree of, of a single term, degree 3, degree 2, degree 1, degree 0, but the degree of a whole polynomial, like the whole thing here, is the greatest degree of any of the non-zero terms of the polynomial. So see, this was degree 3, that was its greatest, so we would say that this polynomial has degree 3, okay? The highest one. The highest one, not the, not the sum, but the highest one. And when it's in descending order or descending degree or descending powers, right, then the degree of the polynomial equals the degree of the first term because that's going to be the highest one if it's in descending power or descending order, okay? So like this guy here, this is negative 6x to the third plus 3x to the second plus 2x minus 5, and then I threw on another term plus 6 over x. Well, right away, this is not a polynomial because you can't divide by x. Remember, they ha it has to be a factor. You cannot have a variable in the denominator, or since the variable in the denominator is like a negative exponent, you cannot have a negative exponent for your variable. 
All right, now in this next example, it says find the degree of the polynomial. So the first thing I'm going to do, and you can see it's already written down, is I'm going to write them in descending order, descending powers. So this is degree 4, this is degree 2, this is degree 5, this is degree 0, this is degree 1. So I'm going to write negative 3x to the fifth, negative because of the minus sign, plus x to the fourth, plus 6x squared, I'm kind of crossing them off so I don't get confused, minus the 2x, minus the 2x, and a plus the 7 here. So my degree is 5, because that's the highest one. Now if you have like terms, then you have to combine. You combine your like terms before you state the degree, because what might happen is you might have two like terms. Let's say I have a negative 3x to the fifth, and one of my terms was a positive 3x to the fifth. They would cancel one another out. They'd be opposites. So make sure you combine like terms prior to stating the degree of a polynomial. Okay, whoop, that's one, we already, that's the wrong page. I grabbed the wrong page, sorry about that, here we go. All right, we can classify polynomials by their degree and by how many terms they have. Okay, for example, if it has only one term, and you can tell there's only one term because there's no plus signs or minus signs, and terms are separated by plus signs and minus signs, then we say that it has one term that it's a monomial. Mono meaning one, like my voice is monotone. So only uh, you know one level of inflection there. So that means one. If I have two terms, and you can tell because they're separated by the plus sign here, we call it a binomial. Uh, bi meaning two, like a bicycle. If we have three terms here, then we call that a trinomial. Now once we get past three terms, we don't have like a quadnomial or a quintnomial or anything like that to my knowledge. We just <coughs> normally call them polynomials with four terms, polynomials with five terms, polynomials with six terms, or just classify them as just polynomials by how many terms. So this guy's got one, two, three, four, five terms. We call it a polynomial of five terms. <coughs> Again, be sure, there's my little warning here, be sure that you combine like terms first because if you have like terms, it might change how many uh, terms that, you, uh, that you'll have when you count them up. It says classify the polynomial by degree and by the number of terms. Well, I have like terms right there. This is 3x squared. A plus 5x and a minus 7x is a minus 2x minus 11. These are all uh, terms. None of these are like terms anymore because I combined the only two that I had. I have three terms. This is a trinomial. And not only is it a trinomial, this has got degree two. Okay, now if, if the degree, and I thought I wrote these down, but apparently I did not. If the degree, oops, if I can spell, is zero, as I mentioned before, when it doesn't have a variable, we call that a constant. If it's degree one, we call it linear. If it's degree two, we call it quadratic, and I know quad kind of looks like kind of looks like four, but that's coming from an old uh, an old ex expression that they used use for squares. They used to call squares quad angles, and squares are two dimensional, so degree two. If it's degree three, we call it cubic, and there's a whole bunch of these. I'll do one more. Four is called quartic, and so on. So we can classify them and give them names, not only by how many terms there are, like back here, monomial, binomial, trinomial, but also by the degree, constants, linears, quadratics, cubics, quartics. So degree two, this is quadratic. A quadratic trinomial, we'll get to those guys, that's for sure. All right, this next one, looks like there's three terms, but as it turns out, three x squared, minus seven, excuse me, three xy minus seven xy plus nine xy, these are all like terms. So I just can go ahead and combine the coefficients, negative four, positive five xy. So this is a monomial, and there's one x and there's one y, so this is degree two. Now normally these names here that we give them are names when we have just a single variable. And in this case we have two, I suppose, Technically, we could call it quadratic, but I think it'd be better off just to, to label it as degree two. 
Told you this was a long section. We're all more than halfway done though. Hang in there. All right, now let's consider the polynomial 4t to the third minus t to the second minus t. Okay, now what I want to be able to do, by, by the way, it's a trinomial. There are three terms and it's cubic because it's degree three here, the highest degree of the, uh, any of the terms is three. So this polynomial is degree three or cubic, right? So what I want to do is I want to use this, but I want to evaluate, find the value, evaluate for a particular value of t. So like here it says t equals five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug five in for the variable t everywhere I see it. So looking back here, I have a t here, I have a t here, I have a t here, and notice where I, what I did is I replaced those t's with fives. And so now it's just a bunch of arithmetic. This is four times, remember you do the exponent first, so this would be 125 minus, this would be 25 minus five. Four times 125 is 500 minus 25 minus five. Well, 500 minus 25 is 475. 475 minus five is 470. And I've evaluated it. Also notice that I put equal sign from one term to the next from one line, I should say, to the next. Here I'm gonna do the same thing, but you have to be careful, especially with those signs. I'm throwing a negative in. So this is gonna be four times negative two to the third power minus negative two to the second power minus a negative two. Negative two to the third power is negative two times negative two times negative two, which is negative eight. So this is four times negative eight minus negative two to the second power is negative two times negative two, that's positive four, it's minus that. And then minus a negative is going to be plus 2. So now I multiply. That's negative 32 minus 4 plus 2. If it helps you think of it as adding the opposite, that's going to be negative 36 plus 2 is negative 34. There's my answer. Be careful when you're evaluating. Sometimes I'll have you plug in a positive, sometimes a negative, sometimes maybe even a fraction or a decimal. Okay? Now, the next thing that we want to do with polynomials is we want to be able to add and subtract them. And we can add or subtract them kind of by using the idea of combining like terms. Now, there are two different approaches when we uh, combine like terms. And I have an example of each here. In fact, here's the first example. Uh, I'm adding 4y to the third minus 2y to the second plus y minus 1 and y to the third minus 1 minus 7 or minus y minus 7. I can combine those by first lining them up vertically, lining up my like terms vertically. So you see the first guy here? There he is. And notice what I do here. I, I, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put this underneath, but I'm going to line up my like terms. So that's the y to the third. It doesn't have a y squared. And then a minus y, and then a minus 7. And then I just kind of combine straight down. Notice here the plus y and the minus y cancel out. Negative 1, negative 7 is negative 8. Negative 2y, and then this is like a 1. 5y to the third negative 2y squared, excuse me. So I can write my answer out and I'm, you know, don't have that y term there. And if I do them horizontally, which is actually the way I like, I think I, when I originally learned this back in my algebra one days, uh, Mr. Alfred taught me how to do this probably by lining them up vertically. But I found late, uh, later on it's better if you can uh, work them out horizontally since a lot of times that's what happens uh, when you're solving an equation. So you see how I line them up this way I drop the parentheses because I'm not distributing through by anything, and then I just combine like terms. Notice how what I do. I underline these two with a single underline. I underline these two with double underlines and then triple underlines. You, you don't have to do that, but I find it easier to keep track of everything that way. So then that's 5y to the third minus 2y squared right there. The y's cancel, and then a minus 1 and a minus 7, negative 1, negative 7, negative 8, or minus 8. And you want to light, write your answers in descending order or descending degree, whenever possible. Okay, so I'm going to do that in this example. I'm going to write 10x to the fourth minus 3x to the second minus x. And I have like terms here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line them up vertically just to show you one example from start to finish. So that'd be x to the fourth minus 3x to the second plus 5x. And as it turns out, this one was really nice because all the terms matched up uh, degree-wise. So now I just go ahead and combine. That's like a 1. I have 11x to the 4th. A minus 3 and a minus 3 is a minus 6x squared. 
This is like a negative 1 and a plus 5, so plus 4x. And that's my simplified answer, my sum. Now, on the other hand, 10x to the 4th minus 3x squared minus x, and I'm going to add to that x to the 4th minus 3x squared plus 5x. I don't have to put parentheses or anything because I'm adding, so it's like distributing by 1, and then combine like terms, and you'll see that I will get the same answer that I got when I added them vertically. A negative 1 and a positive 5 is a plus 4x, and I get the same answer. And if you like this, that's great. You should try to get used to this, though. All right? Now, subtracting is kind of different. When I add polynomials, I usually like to add them, like I said, horizontally, because uh, you know, I might be having to do that when I'm solving an equation. But when I subtract polynomials, if I want to do them horizontally, I have to think of it, well, either way, vertically or horizontally, I have to think of this as adding the opposite. All right, notice here what I've written down. I change all the signs of the second polynomial and then add the results to the first polynomial. Here we go. I've got these two binomials that I'm subtracting. So see, I put this one first and this one on the bottom. And then notice it's a positive 2x plus 6. There's a minus sign out there. I'm going to change it to adding the opposite. You see there in the green, how I change the positive 2x and the positive 6 to negative 2x and the negative 6, and then I just add straight down. Or the way I prefer is to write it out. Notice the parentheses here because of the subtraction. Now this first set of parentheses I really don't need. I just kind of put them in there on, on you know to emphasize that I have this polynomial minus this one. But notice here, where the minus sign is, I put a little 1 there that I'm going to distribute by. And that's going to change those signs. You see how they already turned into the green uh, subtraction signs. This stays the same. Minus 2x, minus 6. And then I combine like terms, and I get the same exact answer. So I can do that either way. Now, here I kind of double-crossed you about the way I, writ I wrote this down. I mean, it looks like this should go on top and this should go on the bottom, but I'm subtracting this from this. So I'm going to put the 14y to the third minus 6y to the second plus 2y minus 5 first. And then from that, I'm going to subtract the 2y to the third minus 7y to the second minus 4y minus 6. Now students get that mixed up all the time because they kind of like to write whatever they see first. They like to write that first. But the wording tells you you're subtracting this from this guy. This guy here is what we call the menu end, and this is the subtrahend. This is what we write first, f from, f first, s subtract, s second. And then I go ahead and do it just like I did the last one. I'm going to put a little 1 in there. I'm going to write this as 14y to the third minus 6y to the second plus 2y minus 5. And then here... I'm going to distribute minus 2y to the third plus 7y to the second. See those signs changing? Plus 4y plus 6. And now it's just a matter of combining like terms. And I got a bunch of them. I have four sets of like terms. So 14y to the third and a minus 2y to the third is 12y to the third. A minus 6y squared and a plus 7y squared is a plus 1y squared, or just plus y squared. I'm not going to put the 1 down. It's not necessary. A plus 2y and a plus 4y is a plus 6y. Combining like terms, and a minus 5 and a plus 6 is a plus 1. And again, descending order, descending degree. All right, now this is going to work kind of the same, except that this is already written as a subtraction, so I don't have to worry about switching anything. It's already set up. So again, I'm going to put the 1 right there that I'm going to distribute by. 7y squared minus 11y plus 8 plus 3y squared minus 4y minus 6. Look for those like terms. If you don't have any like terms, just careful with your terms as far as their degree because you probably want to write it in descending uh, degree or descending order. So this is going to be 10y squared minus 15y and it looks like a plus 8 and a minus 6 is a plus 2 and there's my answer okay 
Now, be careful, again, especially if they uh, try to double cross you by throwing something in maybe with extra variables. And I got one more example for you here. All right, I'm gonna add and subtract as indicated. This is subtraction, so again, it's like adding the opposite. So I have 4x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. There's nothing in front of these parentheses. So this is gonna be minus 6x squared plus 7xy minus 2y squared. Look for like terms. These are like terms, negative 2x squared. These are like terms. A minus 2xy and a plus 7xy is a plus 5xy. They're the like terms because they both have a single factor of x and a single factor of y. And then I have a plus 1y squared and a minus 2y squared is a minus 1y squared or just minus y squared. Now, if you're wondering, well, how do you do the degree in descending order? Well, you'd have to pick a variable. So with respect to x, it's in descending order. There's two x's, there's one x, there's no x's. So you'd have to kind of play it out that way. All right, now, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to show you an example or two here of graphing what we call a quadratic function. That's a polynomial of degree 2. We've already done some graphing with polynomials of degree 1, linear functions. Uh, y equals uh, mx plus b, and we got lines. Well, when we graph quadratic functions, we don't get lines. We get a shape that's called a parabola. Now, to graph anything for the first time, you, if you don't know what the shape looks like, you're best to make a t-chart and get some ordered pairs. So that's what I've done here. I have a t-chart here. I'm going to graph this, y equals x squared. That's the parent function of quadratic functions. And I'm going to write down some nice simple numbers to plug in for x. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. That should be plenty to get an idea. Because when you graph quadratic functions, parabolas are kind of u-shaped. So you need enough points to see the u-shape form of it. So now I'm going to plug these in, which I did here, one at a time, and I got these y values. You can see I plug negative 2 in, it's negative 2 squared, which is positive 4, so I have the ordered pair of negative 2, 4. And I'm going to graph these five points that I have here on, over here, a set of coordinate axes, and do you see the five points here, 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 and here form this U shape, and it goes upward and uh, the, uh, in both directions here, up and up and up and up. And as I mentioned, oh, we got cut off. This is called a parabola, okay? So we try to make it a nice smooth curve. Don't just make it like, you know, connect the dots with line segments where it looks some kind of like some kind of weird V shape or something, all right? Now, as it turns out, uh, we're gonna do more with parabolas later on, but this point that's kind of sitting down here at the bottom, it's got the smallest Y value of any point on there. We sometimes call that a minimum point, or if for a parabola, we call it the vertex. So you can have parabolas that open upward, and the vertex is a minimum point. You can have parabolas that are kind of inverted and open downward, like an upside down U, and then the vertex is sitting up on top of the hill, and we call that a maximum. And there's always a line for parabolas that cuts right through the middle, right through the vertex, and which we call the axis of symmetry. And you can kind of use that to help you with your sketch because you can kind of see how this side and this side are related. It's like it just reflected right over the, uh, the axis of symmetry. So we're going to try one example here. And we're going to make a t-chart. We're going to plug in some x values here. And we're going to see what the graph looks like. So first things first, let's make a t-chart. X and y. We're going to plug in, uh, what did they say to use? Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And then I'm going to have to do a, be very careful because this is not the negative x that's squared. This is the opposite of x squared. So like when I plug negative 2 in, I get y equals the opposite of negative 2 squared plus 2. So I do the negative 2 squared, which is positive 4. So that's negative 4 plus 2 or negative 2. Then I do the same thing with negative 1. The opposite of negative 1 squared plus 2. Negative 1 squared is 1, so this is the opposite of 1, or negative 1 plus 2, which is 1. And then I plug 0 in. That's always nice when we get to plug in 0, because you know that, that in this case here, all that's just 0 plus 2 is 2. And then I plug 1 in, and you'll see some symmetry coming up here. If I plug 1 in, I get the opposite of 1 squared, 
plus 2. Well, 1 squared is 1, so that's the negative 1 plus 2, which is positive 1. And you can see how these two matched up. If I plug 2 in, one more here. Move this up a little bit. I get y equals the opposite of 2 squared plus 2. This is 4 here. So this is negative 4 plus 2 or negative 2. And you can see that these matched up. All right, so I'm going to graph these points. I have to raise this up a little bit here. Bring this over here. I've got a set of axes all drawn out. I've got my scale set. So this is negative 2. Negative 2 is down here in the third quadrant. Negative 1, positive 1 is up here in the second quadrant. 0, 2 is right up top here on the y-axis. It's my y-intercept. 1, 1 is right here. And 2, negative 2. And you can see this is an inverted U shape or an upside down looking parabola. It's going to kind of go with something like this. And again, you just try to make it as smooth a curve as possible. And I like to put the little arrows on the end to indicate that it continues. Okay, definitely want to do your graphs in pencil. Because if you make a mistake in pen, you're going to have to start all over again. I don't want to just see it all scratched out. All right, there was a lot of stuff in this section. You may want to take advantage if you feel like I didn't really understand a particular part of this section because there was so much that uh, I have those other videos that show you how to do specific key concepts. So you may want to uh, go to that and uh, go to some of those videos to help you out. And of course, just make sure, you, you know, with the section covering this much material that you practice, practice, practice.